Welcome back everybody to the R Survival. Last episode we stopped just before we entered Bryansk. And that's where the quest was leading us. So let's go see what's in there. It's about the letter in the that we found in the wall. So we'll see. We have to enter right here, huh? Okay. Let me grab a uh, stuff before we go. I don't need that. I'll grab that and that. Let's go. Uninvited guests. Yes. Flashlight, knife, firearms. We have all of that. Investigator Gar Gavrilov Dasha was just about the only building left standing in the burnt suburban village south of Bryansk. The generous size of the plot, over half an acre, meant that the fire didn't reach the house itself. The garden gate was hanging on only one hinge, and most of the fence around it was in peace on the ground. The gate opened to a freshly trampled path leading to the house, and the path was littered with even fresher cigarettes ends. The house was inhabited, but not necessarily by Gavril Love and his family. Reach, uh, yes, but without, without being noticed, if possible. First, I need to check the whole place out without giving myself away. Gripping my knife and gun, I walk onto the property. Large gooseberry bushes grew along the path, and I decided to do my recon from there. Moving aside the branches, with their needle-sharp thorns, I crawl right into the center of the bush. Darn it, the damn thorns were pricking me through my clothes. I was about to go looking for a new advantage point when three men emerged from the house. A huge bear of a man, around two meters tall, dragged a twenty-something girl out onto the porch. Her face was covered in cuts and scratches, some kind of rag stuffed into her mouth, and her hands were tied with cord. The giant took hold of the cord and began to pull the girl around back. A young guy with a pimpled, hideously ugly face limped after them, wearing a huge oversized jacket over his naked body. Well, you tried. I heard the ugly sniggering, you've made my day. Who did you bring? A chick who's not only useless, but she never shut up. You'd better shut up, pimples, if you know what's good for you, the giant crowl. There weren't any others. You shouldn't have come with us. You should have come with us if you're so smart. Smart? If I wasn't smart, I would have known that you and Ivan were morons that day I met you. The acne guy laugh was even uglier than his mug. Behind the ratchackle house, out house, was a small barn. That's where the giant put the girl. Pimple tried to creep in after, but the big man grabbed the back of his jacket and pulled him aside. Where do you think you're going? Prosak didn't give his say so. Tama, come on, man. I just wanted to have a conversation, Pimple whined. Krasak didn't even say so, the giant repeated, locking the door. He wants her for himself. Is it... Is it going to hurt him? Pimple asked angrily. Maybe it will. What am I supposed to do? Cut off the girl's fingers? That was one time, Pimple protested, but instead of replaying, Tama just pulled him into the house by the scruff of his neck. They were both silent, just as he was closing the door behind him, the big man cursed. The girls are gonna are gone, so there won't be any soup, condensed milk, and rusk again. I waited a little, and then walked around the house perimeter. I managed to glean some information by looking through the window. There were only three rooms in the house, a bedroom, a combined live-in, and a dining room and a kitchen. You could only get to the bedroom through the living room, but the window in the kitchen and the bedroom were open, and they were big enough for a person to climb through. The living room window was locked from the inside, and the window in the hallway was tiny. In the middle of the kitchen, I saw an open door to a cellar. I counted four occupants, Jujuba, their elaborate tattoos. I concluded that all four were ex-convicts. They probably met in prison. The bandits were armed with revolver and AKs, and they looked like they could handle themselves in a fight. Dangerous come. In the living room, I saw the familiar sight of the giant, oiling the component of a rifle. Across the table from him, there was another guy. He was cunning, bald, and wearing glasses. He was playing solitaire and humming under his breath. This must be even the one Pimple mentioned. There was a, one, a man with a thick beard, wearing a, cross, a Cossack sheepskin hat standing in the kitchen. He was missing his right ear, and an old scar scratched across his neck. The man was talking to somebody down in the cellar, Pimple most likely. Where could Gavrilov have gone? I need to search the house, but I can't while there's a, our bandit here. I also recall the rough-top girl 
who the Cossack was keeping from himself. I'd like to help her out too, but the key to the barn was being yelled by one of the scumbags. I'll have to deal with the bandits, but there's are four of them. I have no chance against them in a fight. But who said that a, a direct approach was the only option? I do have a few key advantages. I know about my opponent, but they know nothing about me. They may be stronger than me, but I have stealth and surprise on my side. Some good luck wouldn't hurt, though. The survivor opponent are skill and tough fighter. Your only chance is to take them out by stealth one at a time. Don't let them see you. I'm outside. There's nobody around. I can't, I can't be seen from any of the window. Mm. The bedroom was uh, alone, right? Uh, that's a very bad idea. Go through the main door into the hallway. Kitchen window. There's two guys there. I have to take them alone. Oh, that's not what I wanted. <clears throat> Oops. There are two people in the living room. Tema the giant and a bald, nerdy-looking guy called Ivan. Am I sitting at the... Threadbar couch is disassembling an assault rifle and now he's cleaning the piston and the gas tube with the cloth. Is AK sitting behind him, which meant that he's cleaning somebody else's gun. Ivan is playing solitaire at the table, most of the table is covered with newspaper, and on top of those are food scraps, empty glasses and jar, dirty knives and forks, ashtray, and a huge cold samovar. I'm outside. Okay. So I click look through the kitchen window. Uh, let's go in the bedroom. I'm in the bedroom. Apart from the ugly red polka dot wallpaper and the ancient double bed, there seems to be nothing of note in here. Next to the door, there is a vanity table with cosmetic bottle of all shapes and sizes. And in the opposite corner is a huge wardrobe and an ironing board. No sound is coming from the living room, even though the door is slightly ajar. Uh, let's search the room carefully. The wardrobe is stuffed full of old clothes, but a smallish person could fit in there. I could also hide under the bed, the room partition will hide me if someone comes in. A booty could be hidden under there too. I found a broken cloth uh, iron on top of shelf in the wardrobe. The card is perfectly ripped off. I turn it over in my hand and thought I could use this cord as a ligature. I tore the cord out of the iron and used my knife to cut off the plug. Okay, so we have a, pl a place we can hide a body. That's good. Okay. Lure one of the bandits, smash a bottle from the vanity on the floor and hide in the wardrobe? Uh, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. The plan could have worked if only one person had come in the room, but Tema and Ivan come in together. Tema has a gun on his back and the handle of a revolver sticking out of Ivan's jacket pocket. I've got two options, jump out the wardrobe and kill both of them before they can call their comrade. <sighs> Risky. Or wait it out in the wardrobe like a coward. I don't like the idea of being a coward, but I don't have much faith that a surprise attack will be successful. Especially giving the sheer bulk of Tim. Yeah. Stay hidden. Wait. Maybe I did take the coward's way out, but it was also the smart thing to do. The bandits search the room. They even look under the bed. They didn't even kick the bottle fragment on the ground and bolt the window. The wind. What do you think it was? A ghost? Well, you never know, the mushrug. I remember the cops. Well, boy, had a nice walk. Time to go back in the prison. Alright, it was the wind, Tim said. They went back out in the living room. When I was sure they, were, they weren't coming back, slip out the wardrobe and open the window again. Well, okay. So I guess we're leaving this, uh, the bedroom. Hmm. What can we do? We did the bedroom. That's not a good idea. We did the look through the kitchen window. We can look through the living room window. No, we already did that. Never mind. Uh, kitchen window. The slider is open in the kitchen. It's unclear what Pimple is doing down there at the long counter top. The Cossack is singing something under his breath. He's got two revolver tucked in his belt. We could probably try to take out this guy. On the counter, there's a six open can of condensed milk and two enamel bowls, one of which is full of dry bread. Along the opposite wall, there is a dirty Minsk fridge, a sink with a pile of dishes in, in it, and a gas stove with some kind of grain scatter over it. Well, the only two options... Oh, there's some kind of crashing noise coming from the kitchen. What's going on? As soon as I looked at in through the window another crash came from the cellar followed by a triumphant shout a minute later a filthy but happy pimple climbed out of the cellar he was uh, clasping a three liter bottle of wine take a look at this why the hell did 
he have to nail the box shot. My hands are full of splinter. If I ever meet the guy who owns this place, I'll wring his f neck. The Cossack took the bottle out of his hand, pulled the cork out, sniffed and made a face. Pig's wheel? Pig's wheel. Biplus repeated outright, this is top class wine, on brew stuff, not that paint stripper they used to sell in shop. Cheers. Let's go, the leader ordered curtly. He gave the bottle back to Pimple and headed for the living room. Pimple limped after him. So they're all in the living room? I'm outside. Alright. So what happened if we check the living room now? Yeah, all four bandits are in the living room. Timai is still sitting in the couch and cleaning the barrel of the assault rifle. I guess he must get some enjoyment out of it. Uh, the Cossack, Ivan and Pimple are playing cards at the table. The wine's already been poured into glasses, but the Cossack hasn't touched it. The nerd is drinking in moderation, but the acne guy is constantly topping a, up his own glass. Once in, in a while, he sticks his own watch hand into the 5 liter jar of uh, Sorkrat and stuff another fistful of cabbage into his mouth. So they're all in the same place. So we can go in the kitchen? Hmm, yeah, let's go in the kitchen and see what we can get. Whoops. The entrance to the cellar gap opened in the middle of the floor. I peered down and saw only sagging shelves, big dark cans and cobweb. Lots of cobwebs. A wooden flight of steps leads down. There's a counter running along the left hand side of the kitchen. On it are six open cans of condensed mix and two enamel balls. One of them is full of rust pieces. The other has condensed milks with breadcrumbs mixing. Along the right hand wall, there is a dirty minx fridge, a sink with a pile of dishes in it, and gas stove with some kind of grain scatter over it. Uh, search the kitchen? In the time they've been living in the former investigator Dasha, the bandit had managed to work their way through all the food. I didn't see a crumb of edible food anywhere apart from the condensed milk and the rusks. Even the jar of fancy spices has been emptied. All the dishes, including the expensive dinner plate, greasy and sticky, were piled up in and around the sink. I opened the refrigerator, and my nose with it by a stench so powerful that spasm started somewhere in my throat. The smell could have been from a whole fridge worth of rotten food, but it was only an open can of sardine. To be fair, there weren't any premium quality sardine left in the tin, just a murky yellowish goo. Ew! The sardine sludge was the same color as condensed milk. Pour the... yeah. Pour the rotten meat into the condensed milk and... yeah. I carefully poured the liquid from the can into the bowl of condensed milk and stir it until it was fully mixing. It, it looked the same color as before, it didn't smell of anything and I hope that the taste hadn't changed much. After lunch today, my friend will be sick to their stomach at the very least, yes. Okay, can we go downstairs? Go down in the cellar. I started to carefully go down the stair, they were crook, and the left stringer hit the beam loudly with every step. I turned on my flashlight and looked around the rotten, blackened wood covered with cobweb here and there, glass of tin, glass and tin container gleam in the darkness, moldy jam was visible in some of them. An unknown liquid had been poured on the floor, bits of wood and glass floated in it. The wooden crate that Pimple broke open was beside the stair, empty. There was nothing else to do down here. I went back up, stopped on the threshold and wiped the sole of my feet with a rag. Hmm. Okay, so nothing else to do in here? Climb out the window? No, I'm not gonna go in the hallway. Okay, so uh... We poisoned them. Kitchen we did, bedroom we did, we can check the... Oh, that's not what I wanted. Yeah, it's the same thing. Observe the house from outside. The house has always three rooms. A kitchen, a living room and a bedroom. From the hallway you can go outside or continue on the kitchen or the living room. You have to go through the living room to get to the bedroom. There are open windows, the kitchen and the bedroom. The kitchen has a cellar. Beside the house, they properly also include an outhouse and a barn. Okay. I'm outside, yes. Well, uh, the only thing we can do else is uh, the hallway, right? I'm in the hallway. The light is poor out there. Embers are smoldering in the stove. There is a coat rack on the opposite side and an old-fashioned console table with a mirror. The door to the living room is shut tight. Through the empty doorways, the opposite wall, I can see the kitchen and the open door of the cellar. 
Uh, we can listen to the conversation or search the hallway. We can search first. As I crept around the hallway, the floodboard ground violently beneath my feet. Luckily, the living room door was shut and they couldn't hear me. Several heavy coats and winter camouflage jackets were piled up under their coat rack and next to the console table, the coat looked like they had spent a week lying in a swamp. After rummaging behind the stove, I pulled out a poker. It was thick enough to use as a weapon, but maybe it could have been for another purpose. I took it. Okay, so we have another thing to use. We can listen to them. Hey, can you quit eating that junk? You're making me sick. Either we play or I'm out here, said Evan, I think. Huh, want some, Shulja just said, man. It goes really good with the wine, Pimple said, good naturally. I don't want it, and I don't want your wine either, Evan said, sounding strange. Hey man, don't get your panties in a twist, you didn't lose big, Demo said. Have a drink and you'll feel better. You, the nerd replied piteously. They felt silent. Okay, so they're not fighting, but they don't like each other? Somebody just cried out in the living room? Yes. Before I could bring my ear to the gap, there was a loud bang, then the sound of glass breaking. Hey, you crazy? Shout Pimple. What do you think you're going? You're doing, Be. Or are you calling B? Ivan replied, breathing heavily. Cossack, did you see it? He's playing us. Look at the bastard got the deck stacked. It sounds like somebody got a good punch in. You're drunk. Go sleep it off. Came the leader. This has this has disaffected voice. You you the nerd voice trembled with outrage. You broke my glasses. Go sleep. Repeat the Cossack. Without raising his voice, a couple of seconds pass and I watch through the crack as if I retreated to the bedroom. Pimple, clean up your swill and go get some food. Okay, so it's good that he go get some food and maybe we can go take the guy in the bedroom? Yeah, go outside. Go outside. Then go to the bedroom. Okay, the door to the living room is closed, the bed is barely visible from the window and I have to poke my head in slightly. Evan is sitting in the edge of the bed, his head follow lolling forward. A large bruise is darkening on his face, a revolver peek out of his jacket pocket. Even glass are on the vanity, the frames are broken. If he's drunk enough or if his eyesight is bad without glasses, I can sneak up on him. But maybe I shouldn't risk it, I can wait until he falls asleep. Yeah, let's wait, let's not take any risk. Wait for a short while? Yeah, let's... no. Well, okay. The Cossack is still sitting at the table, he is strumming the guitar and singing something under his breath. People is crawling across the floor with a cloth, cleaning up the spilled wine and wringing it out into a pot. Emma is still sitting on the couch, looks like he's dozed off. Next to him is the assembled assault rifle and a handful of cartridge. So, let's go... I guess we should wait. Yeah, let's wait. A few minutes went by, everything was quiet. Keep going. Okay. Now we should be able to take the guy from the bedroom. The door in the living room is closed. The bed is barely visible. Yeah, Ivan is lying on his stomach, cross away in the bed, a large broom darkening on his face, a revolver pick out. Even his glass are on the vanity, the frames are broken. I listen closely, the bandit is snoring. Yeah, climb. I climbed into the bed, the room as silently as I could and start creeping toward the bed. It didn't uh, take my eye off of the bandit, it didn't move another couple steps and something crunched under my feet. My eyes darted down and I saw a shattered lens from a pair of glasses. Luckily the sun was too quiet to wake Ivan. No sound came from behind the closed door. Either this place had great soundproofing or the bandit and the living room weren't talking. Either way, I need to do everything quickly and quietly and leave no traces. Uh, hit Ivan in the head with the poker? No. Strangle? Yeah. Slit Ivan's throat? That's even better, though. Hmm. Because if I uh, use the... The strangle is gonna fight back. But I think I can take him. If I slit his throat, uh, there's gonna be a pool of blood. So if someone come check on him... Because if I just strangle him, they might think he's still sleeping. Yeah, let's go with that. Dropping one end of the cord under Ivan's neck, I crossed the ends and pulled with all my strength. Ivan's eyes flew open, bulging, and he grabbed at his neck with a terrible croaking sound. He tried to turn onto his back, but I pressed him into the bed with my weight. After a minute, it was all over. I listened. There was no sound beyond the door. 
Yeah, hide the body. Oh. I could hide the body under the bed, but Ivan Mysterious disappearing will put the other on their guard. Then I had a bad idea. I turned the bandit collar up to hide his neck and roll him onto his side on his back. Was So his back was to the door. From his angle, he just looked... Exactly. Exactly. That's what I... That was my plan. Before I could climb out, I heard a scrapping sound coming from the kitchen window. I crept up to it and looked inside. The giant Emma was standing by the open cellar door, holding bowls of condensed milk and rust pieces. The people guy in his face was sticking up of the cellar. I'm filled with this crappy condensed milk. Eat it yourself, pimple wine. I want to eat normal food. Good, the giant's gonna be sick. Go on and look, Tema laughed. While you're looking, we'll eat all this. That's just fine by me, and whatever I'll find is mine. I find is all mine. Pimple replied and disappeared into the cellar. You're welcome to it, Tema chuckled and left the kitchen. The Cossack is still sitting at the table. He is strumming the guitar and singing something under his breath. Tema entered the room and sat both bold in front of the Cossack, who then asked something probably about Pimple. The giant replied, chuckling good naturally. The leader raised his eyebrows and seemed to consider something. Then he pointed Tema toward the bedroom door, telling him to call Ivan. Tema nodded and went to the bedroom. The Cossack scratched a place where his right ear used to be, then he picked up on his guitar again. Tema stood in the doorway and called Ivan's name. There was no response, of course. The giant walked closer to the bed and called him again louder this time. He's out for the count, he shouted to the Cossack. Should I wake him? Screw it, let him sleep, the leader replied. Come and eat. Tema left, closing the door behind him, I slumped against the wall by the window and tried to breathe normally again. That was close. Time to deal with Pimple. Yep. Everything here is the same as before. Pimple is down in the cellar. Every so often I can hear a creaking protest of rotten flu floorboard. The sound of breaking glasses rose up from the cellar, then it happened again. Clearly Pimple had knocked over jars in a tantrum where he couldn't find anything edible. He had left his AK on the kitchen counter. This could be my best opportunity to get rid of this creep. I might not get as a good chance again. Uh, we can stab the guy who dropped the refrigerator, but if we drop the refrigerator, it's gonna make a bunch of noise though. Do I want to make any noises? I think we're going to the stab. With my knife at the ready, I start down the stair and finally the creaking of the step gave me away. Who the hell's that? Crimpe Pie voice in a sinister whisper. I couldn't tell where it was. The cellar was so dark and cobweb. That was a mistake. A hefty jam jar flew at my face. I shielded my head with my arm and at the last second, but the bandits came straight at me, shoved me against the wall. I hit the wooden shelf, fell and hit my head. Next thing I knew, the pimple creep had sunk in its teeth into my hand. The, the one holding the knife. I yelled in pain. Stay here, pimple hissed. And he scuttled up the stair into the kitchen. He closed the cellar door. We'll back real soon. Crap. Well, they're not that bad. Oh, but that was a mistake. God damn it. Okay, I'm gonna bring my best stuff. Yeah, that's all I can do. So... I guess I can go... Hmm. In here? And I cannot reach any of those, huh? No, they have to move. Yeah. Okay, if I move once... If I move over here, I think I can reach. Yes! Take that! Now her, huh? And that! There you go. Two of them are out. I have some more... Uh... What are they doing? They're waiting for me, huh? Well, uh, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna kill at least one of them. Yeah. You're down. Only one guy. Whew. Good thing we had armor. There you go. They were not too bad. Uh, well. That was not the plan, but uh, we did it. A bunch of good stuff too. Damn. Wow, even more, <laughs> okay, that was worth, and it keeps on coming, okay, ew, I don't want that though, uh, sure, rusk, yeah, probably condensed milks too, cigarette, <laughs> condensed milk, yeah, homemade wine, okay, okay, more, okay, I search every inch of the house trying to find any clues, but I turned up nothing. 
Uh, where could the investigator have gone? If the dacha had been abandoned, I probably would have found something here. But the uninvited guests have managed to put their stamp on the place. I better free the prisoner. I took the key from Teba's body and headed for the barn. There were no light source in the barn apart from the solitary shaft of sunlight coming through the hole in the roof. The floorboard creaked in protest as I tried. As I tread on them, the prisoner sat covering in the same dark corner. Free her. At first, the, the, the girl glared at me with hatred, but then her expression changed. Hey, I don't remember you. You're not one of them. No, I'm not one of them, and they are gone. I killed them. They uh, get up. We need to get out of here. Can you walk on your own? You killed them? Her mouth felt open in amazement. On your own? Against them all? No way. How did you do it? I'm Varia, by the way. Good to meet you, Varia. I'll tell you everything on the way, so can you walk on your own? Varia took an uncertain step and staggered. She grabbed onto the wall. Sorry, my legs are cooperating. What do we do? C could you carry me? Only for a little while, until my legs are back to normal. Uh, you really can't walk on your own. See for yourself. Oh, crap. As we walked toward the forest, Varia ran into her trials and tribulation at the end of the bandit. Then she moved on to the, to the tale of her anus kidnapping, and then she told me in detail about the awfulness of her aunt, who she lived with in a village outside Bransk. I barely understood I was too absurd in my own thoughts. Sorry, what did you say? I said that she's just jealous of me. No, before that, there's a village of survivors outside Bransk. Can you show me the way? Sure, but you know what? I just thought I don't want to go back to my aunt. Maybe I can travel with you. With me? I confess that I almost dropped Varia in shock. Yeah, and what? You're strong, brave, you can protect me. You, like, risk your life to save me. Now I have to pay you back. What am I gonna do at my aunt's? I'll be bored out of my mind. Uh, let's do it this way. I'll take you back to your aunt and I'll go away for a little while. You have the chance to think about how you want to thank me, alright? Back to my aunt, huh? Fine. Hey, can you teach me how to shoot? Gently but firmly end the conversation. <laughs> okay. It goes without saying, I have no plans to go back for Varia. I'll take her to her hunt, ask the local about Gavrilov, and get out of there. A strange detail distracted me from my thoughts. The grass next to where I left my things was trampled. I told Varia to wait there for me, and I tried to see where the uninvited visitor could have come from. I didn't have to go far, there was track in the wet earth beyond the grass, and I had seen those tracks before at the Institute of Virology, like wolf's track, but too big to be a wolf. A blind black wolf, and bullets are useless against them. We need to get out of here, fast. Okay, where do we need to go? Oh, just on the other side of this big city? Okay, I'm fine with this. So, uh, and now I have the girl with me? Somewhere? I don't know. We can loot though. Uh, water, radiation. Oh, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Required on main wine 5, you have health. Water plus 5 and radiation. Wow. That's really good. Okay. I don't want any of that. Maybe those. Uh, knives. Oh my god. Do I want 4 knives? I want those though. I'll break that one, grab that, and I'll uh, check the bodies. No, nope, they're already uh, okay. Alright, well, uh, I'll go through the town and uh, I'll see what's happening in Seltso. Let's see uh, what the girl have to say. There was about a dozen in Abed and half as many as were in the camp near Tula. From their conversation, I learned that life here wasn't all smooth sailing. The harvest from the kitchen garden was paltry, and they live in a near starvation, and they only had three old haunting guns between the whole village. Find uh, Varia's aunt? Yes. After dropping off Varia with her aunt, who turned out to be a perfectly friendly and kind woman, I start asking around about the investigator G Gavrilov. It so happened that he, has, he was well known around those parts. At the height of the epidemic, Pavlev Gavrilov and his wife abandoned their holding and went to Kiev. They probably hoped to free the Poland while the border were still open. Okay, let's talk around. I was surprised to find that a pensioner make up almost half of the refugee population. I was told that many of many of younger one went south a long time ago to search for a better place to live. Oleg Yakovlevich, a former architect, is the leader here. 
Go to the leader. Hey, thank you for your help. I want to ask you for something else. We have a problem. Many of our house are infested with cockroaches and bed bugs. Okay. I'm getting sick of all these complaints, but there's nothing I can do. We could use some poison, but we don't have any. Could you find some? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Would it be nice just to exterminate them all? <laughs> bed bugs? Yeah. Refugee from Bias and its surrounding settlement live here. A little more than 30 people. Several families live in the each. In each of the Lug's cabin that survived the fire, they are virtually defenseless against Predator and Bandits. Three old guns make up the settlement ar entire arsenal, but the people haven't lost heart. Let's go see Varia. Bored and nothing to do. Well, I don't want to do anything, I guess. Hey, what kind of cartridge do you have? Big one like my uncle, or are they small? Gently but firmly end the conversation. Oof. Okay, how about the bunkhouse? Oh, it's her again. It's Urukin. Can we say yes? How long? Never mind. I changed my mind. I don't want to... Uh... Yeah. Well, I guess that's it for here. Okay. Well, that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoy. Uh, leave a like and a comment if you did to let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.